to start out? You want to start? I'll start. Right. Or we can continue with the music. What's up, everyone, and welcome to The Weekly Flare, episode 21. I'm one of your hosts, James Walter, and with me, as always, Mr. Chris Garcia. What's going on? Not too much, Chris. How are you doing? Excellent. Awesome. We got a lot to talk about today, Chris. Um, how's your week? Slow but steady. I'm kind of ready for the weekend already. Well, only a few more days. Of course, by the time this goes up, it's the weekend. So we're almost there. It's not really like it goes up Friday. Well, Thursday night. So. There's no Friday yet. All right. So, Chris, let's just get right into it because we have a lot to talk about. Yeah, that's fine. So, Sunday was a wrestling pay per view. Yes. It was awesome. I didn't get to show up. That's not what we're going to talk about, though. We're going to talk about Monday Night Raw the next night when John Cena is up there talking about how. Uh, how awesome WWE is, I guess. I don't know. He's talking about uh, never giving up. Yes. And he saw a kid with a sign that said he's never giving up fighting cancer or something like that. And so John Cena was up there uh, talking about it and saw the sign and called him out and invited him up into the ring with him where the kid got a standing ovation. Does that happen a lot? No. So fans never, never go in the No, ring. Not, not never, just not often. It's not a regular occurrence. It's very not unusual. Was there another time that this ever happened or that you remember? There's been times where, like, um, they had a bunch of people get in, like, T-shirts and go in the ring. But I'm not sure if those were from the... They were as poised as from the audience. But, obviously, they were pulled ahead of time if they were, so... So this isn't a setup? This was No, this wasn't a setup. Out. This was he just saw it and... Yeah, the kid signs that I'm being cancer and I never give up or something like that. So that was pretty cool. You know, I just thought we'd start it off since wrestling, since like I said the pay per view just happened, that we would just talk about that real quick. So we jump into you know that's one of your that you're a big John Cena fan. I'm a big wrestling fan. Yeah. You ever gonna wear your uh, Cena gear on on the podcast? No, I reserve it just for for pay per just pay-per-view. for the pay per view on Sundays and Mondays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just for pay per views. And I don't even wear it for every pay per view honestly. Just. You know, every now and then. Okay. You know. It's good. You gotta get that wrestling in. Definitely. Not near as... That was uh, one of our good stories for the week. Awesome as your story, though. Definitely. Which is? <clears throat> five-year-old. What about a five-year-old? A five-year-old with a certain disability. She is not named. She is not mentioned. I guess they didn't, the me- they didn't want to give the media that her name at all. But she suffers from some sort of disability. Now... Um, she was being bullied uh, extremely hard, especially for a five-year-old, mm. uh, such as being hit or uh, kicked, and those kind of certain things. And we're seeing that a lot now, a, a lot more these days. But we're also seeing a lot more people standing up, uh, regardless for themselves or for other people. Uh, we've seen in the past where uh, people with disabilities or people who are disliked uh, for some odd reason because they are different. Uh, being bullied, <clears throat> for example, uh, I guess there was a there was a couple other stories here, such as um, like for example, Desiree Andrews, who has Down syndrome, was bullied. Um, so she was in the stands at a basketball game, and the mm-hmm. ba- the basketball players walked over at at a timeout to confront these people uh, who were bullying her. So going back to the the five year old girl. Uh, there was a bunch of bikers, and usually bikers have that bad mentality that they're bad people. Um, you know, the one percenters and the uh, Hell's Angels and that kind of stuff. Uh, but these bikers consist of EMTs, police officers, firefighters. And um, But this little girl is from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Um, but like I said, she is not revealed or identified. Uh, but the motorci- motorcycle club surprised the girl. Um, last month in an effort to make her feel empowered. Uh, they ran up all the bikes and we rode over to the little girl's house and said, hey, um, I guess their group is called the Punishers. The Punisher. Which is kind of... Kind of superhero? Like, maybe. I don't know where they got their name from. The Punisher. But uh, the motorcycle club whose members include, like I said, law enforcement, EMS, personnel, and firefighters were uh, asked to speak to the girl who had been jumped by some of the neighborhood kids who, uh, who apparently beat her up. So uh, when they showed up to her house, they assured her uh, that they'd have her back, which is kind of cool. We see this in a lot of movies. Um, so 
you know, it's good that people are standing up and, and fighting for their community uh, to help people. People are becoming less and less self selfish. Absolutely. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah. Is that it? That is it. That's the whole story. Should, yeah. Cool. You had the John Cena story, which I thought you would want to talk about. Talk about that one since you're a big yeah. WWE fan. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I saw that uh, they tweeted out or something like that. I don't know where I read it earlier Good. this week. It was pretty cool. Gives John Cena some street cred. Yeah, he doesn't really need street no, cred. He's got plenty. He's pretty much what he is. Everyone knows. <laughs> Not everyone likes it, but everyone knows what he is. Definitely. So, Chris, something else we like to talk about a lot on this podcast, other than people being nice to each other, because that's kind of important. Yes. We also want to talk about SpaceX, because they do a lot of crazy stuff. And we want to talk about 3D printing. Well, this story has to do with kind of both. Okay. Okay, so there's this lady. Her name was Dolly Singh, and she was um, a high executive at SpaceX, okay? Okay. And so when she started, um, she knew kind of about, you know, rockets, and she knew Elon Musk. Um, track record and kind of what his philosophy was on business and he I guess the story goes and when he hired her he drew two lines one that kind of was going up and said that was technology in Silicon Valley it's getting cheaper faster mm. and more reliable then he drew a flat line representing space technology and was like it's basically done nothing for the last 50 years he said so basically this isn't a leap of faith this is guaranteed that we can do something to use this technology that's advanced and pull space mm. forward basically Turns out he was right. He's done a lot of amazing stuff with space flight um, through SpaceX. And this uh, lady helped walk tons of people through his office as they were hiring and doing all sorts of different stuff. And she, um, still not crazy, you know, about, you know, she liked her job. It was a good job. She enjoyed it. Uh, but she really drove her crazy was how terrible shoes are, specifically high heels. Mm -hmm. Now, you ever wore high heels? No. Oh, well, that's good. Because that would be weird. Yeah, I, had, I had to think about that for a minute. I, I know. Why did you have to think about that, Chris? I don't know. We should have had someone else sitting here to talk about high heels. Yeah. We actually could speak to how terribly uncomfortable they are. I could imagine looking at them, how terribly uncomfortable they are. Though. Tweet at us and tell us how uncomfortable they are and why you wear them. Mostly just they're uncomfortable. And so she walked around day after day wearing terribly uncomfortable shoes. And uh, she thought, why are these shoes so uncomfortable? And so she said, you know what? She took the same philosophy that Elon Musk did. She drew a line saying technology has been advancing, getting more reliable, better, faster, cheaper. And then she drew, a f basically, I mean, not, she mentally did this. She didn't actually draw this out because she wasn't showing anyone. And then she was like, but the shoe industry has basically been the same for the last 50 years, whatever. Yes. They still make high heels basically the same way they've always made them uncomfortable and out of metal and apparently compressed cardboard. And that sounds uncomfortable. Mm. And so she went and talked to an astronaut and one of the other scientists that worked with Elon Musk and basically asked them, instead of asking them how they would remake a shoe, asked them how they would redesign a chassis that supports their body. Of course, they gave her a bunch of physics and stuff. And she said, that's great. I don't want to make a new chassis. Though. I want to make a new shoe. So she went and uh, basically got a new shoe design that's 3D printed out of plastics because that was what her specialty was in with some plastics apparently. And yeah, so she's 3D printing high heels. They, they go on pre-order sometime. They're going to be like really expensive because they're really expensive. They're going to start at like $950, $950 for a pair. And then after the pre-order, the initial pre-order rounds, they're gonna, she's going to have four different ones that range from $350 to $950. Jeez. Now, I don't know anything about shoes or high heels or really about fashion for that matter. But what I do know is that this 3D printed high heel, where is it? Looks like a shoe. Yeah. And it looks like a high heel, but it's supposed to be a lot more comfortable. I like to put that to the test. I don't know how we could test that. We'll have to get Rachel to wear Yes. I don't think she wears high heels, though. We'll find someone who wears high heels. I'll find somebody. And we'll get them to test them for us and let us know. Which. But I'm also not going to buy these because they're really expensive. Yeah. Do you, uh, what what do you what shoes do you wear that are comfortable? I wear my combat boots. Okay. My, what what uh, else? Something uncomfortable. Uh, pretty much everything else. A dress shoe. Any other shoe, basically, actually. I gotta say. I found that boots are extremely comfortable, and other shoes are not. 
The one thing that I have problems with my boots for work, they're steel toe. No, they the only problem I have is they're not very breathable. No, their boots are not supposed to be breathable. So I have to say they're comfortable, got a lot of room, they protect my feet. But I have to say that the best, my the most comfortable shoe that I've worn is Tom's. I don't know why. Really? Yes. Interesting. I own two pairs now. Um, I've worn Vans. They're a little bit tight around the the uh, my foot. Yeah. But the Toms, they they spread out. They breathe nice. They're light, and they've got this cushion around. I see. I like my boots because the boots. So you got the ankle support. Mm -hmm. You can tie them down tight. You can step on pretty much anything, and your foot's not going to be sore. True. Uh, I actually got my boots resold because I like them so much. Uh, which normally I would just buy new shoes, mm -hmm. but I was like, nope, just getting them resold. Uh, I'll probably buy new ones next time because the stitching is starting to come out from the leather. So but would you consider getting a, if these revolutionize everything, and these are the most comfortable shoes for a female. I'm not wearing high heels, no. No. Would you consider, what if they made a boot that was 3D printed and more comfortable than the boots you own? Yeah, I would buy them. For that price? Well, why not? You heard it here, folks. If they were that comfortable. I mean, I paid my boots for expensive. 80, 90, 100, somewhere okay. in there. What kind are they? They're SWAT X um, Army Surplus ones. Okay. Mine are, mine are Craftsman. They're $50. They were a uh, Black Friday deal. Okay. Buy one for 50 get one for another pair for a dollar. Yep. I originally actually got them because I was playing a bunch of paintball. Okay. And so I wanted something that I could wear playing paintball that had good ankle support and I couldn't run over logs and whatever else mm -hmm. obstacles would be in the way. And then I just started wearing them all the time because they were very comfortable. I've never been to paintballing. Wow. Can we go? Well, we can, yes. When? I don't know. Whenever you want. We're going to see. Let's go on Saturday. Uh, I can't do this Saturday. Why? I have a fishing tournament that I've got a show to go to. A fishing tournament? Yep. Are you like announcing for it? No. Are you fishing? I'm fishing. What are you fishing for? Uh, it's just a small pond fish. It's for my church. What kind of fish is a small pond fish? Uh, I've never heard of that one. Crappy. Oh, crap. Why don't you just say crappy? Or is it crap? Blue, or is, bluegill, it is it crappy? Or crap? Crappy, crappy, whatever you want to say. I don't catch fish. Bluegill. I just eat them. Yellowtail. We had red snapper for dinner. Was it good? It was I did see that. Yeah. Happy two year anniversary. Yeah, it was for work, by the way, he's talking mm -hmm. about. It was delicious. I bet so. Yes. Red Snapper, very tasty. You know that's from? No. UHF, Weird Al. Ah. We have to look at that again. UHF was so fun. <laughs> okay. Um. So yeah, that's 3D printed high heels. They're pretty crazy. They're supposed to be really comfortable. And uh, uh, that's all I can say about them because I don't know how high heels normally feel. You know what I do know how it normally feels though. What's that? Rock band guitars. Oh, definitely. And What's I have good news for rock band guitars. They're all going to be supported still. So all your old rock band instruments are officially now supported. Um, they're still working out like the Ion drum kit and like the Guitar Hero guitars apparently. But all the official rock band classic instruments are going to work for Rock Band 4. Now, for PS4, you can just plug them right in. No problem. The USB will just recognize them right away. Apparently, on Xbox, it's a little bit more difficult because everything on Microsoft is a little bit more yeah, difficult, unfortunately. But there's going to be a little dongle you can buy that'll just you have to buy an extra thing for them and then plug that into your Xbox One and you're good to go. So, I can have the most epic rock band parties now because when I buy the new set, I will have so many classic instruments. The world is going to go crazy. Could you have three or four guitars if you wanted to? No. It's just guitar, bass, drums. So you can have a rhythm, you can't have a lead? No. Oh, going back man. to the basics. Guitar, bass, drums, vocal. That, but you can still have the vocal harmony parts. Because that's pretty normal for a small band. They still have multiple singers. So you can't... So what you're saying is you can't have what they would call a... Like what Guitar Hero had. Where you can play the same notes... I don't, they haven't said if they're going to have score attack or not. Okay. Um, I know in the past, get rock bands had score attack, and oh, people played it, but the big focus they're going back to is just the, the rock Basic band, band. And the rock band idea. And they have, I mean, I don't want to talk about it. We've talked about a lot of stuff they're already mm -hmm. doing. So we know, I just wanted to get out there that 
All your old instruments are supported. They're all going to work. So don't throw them away. Go dig them out. Dust them off. Now, Green Day, th there's a picture here. Green Day. That's Green Day. That's off the old game, correct? Was there was a Green Day rock band. Rock band, okay. So that's just an older picture. It's not It's not showing us anything in the near future. I don't know. I think that might be updated visuals from the new game engine, but... Yeah. Oh man, I'm so ready for Rock Band 4. To come What's our out. countdown? There's no actual date yet. We'll probably find out in a couple weeks. Good. So, well, that being said, Chris, why don't we take a quick break? Okay. And uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about Amiibos. Amiibo. Because there's some counterfeits floating around apparently now. We're going to talk about a robot cheetah that can jump because robots shouldn't be able to jump. And then uh, we'll see what else we got going on. We got some other stuff at the end of the show, so don't go away because we'll be right back. 